Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, of course, what are we drinking? We are drinking Le Marchand's East India Porter. The last two bottles. You betcha. I'm gonna savor these. <laughs> Today we're gonna bring to you 1979's Don't Go in the House. Or is it 1980's? Hmm. It's debated. Yeah. It was filmed in 79, I think it came out in 1980. The movie was written and directed by Joseph Ellison. Dan Grimaldi is in this and he's uh, a mainstay in The Sopranos. Don't Go in the House starts off with our main character here, Donnie. He's working at some sort of factory, not quite sure exactly what it is. Big ass furnace there. <laughs> And this guy is trying to get this spray can, like a compressed spray can, out of this fur- Why it's there in the first place? I think they're burning garbage. You can tell something's <laughs> gonna happen. <laughs> All these flames come out of the furnace, and Donnie, like, freezes watching this poor guy burn. Other people come by and they put him out. The boss comes up to him and gives him shit. He's like, why did you just stand there and do nothing? You just stand there like a faggot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back when he can just throw that word around. <laughs> right. Donnie's leaving for the day and his buddy Ben comes out and kind of says, oh, Donnie, don't feel so bad. You know, people freeze. It happens. Come out for a beer with me. Like, no, no, I got to get home. Mom is sick. So as Donnie's driving home, you can hear these voices in his head, but... But they're not his. He gets home and starts talking to his mom who's upstairs. Hey mom, I'll make you some tea. You want some chamomile tea? Here's some tea, mom. No response. <laughs> starts shaking her and, well, she's dead. Drink your tea! <laughs> suddenly, relief. Starts smoking yeah. in the house because he couldn't smoke before and turns can, on all his disco music. You can play my music loud? <laughs> Puts on all this disco music and starts jumping on the furniture. As this is happening, he's having a flashback to when he was a kid and his mom scolding him and punishing him by burning his arms over top of the open flames on like a gas stove. <laughs> the next day, Donnie doesn't go into work. Lining this room with all this aluminum in the house, he sees a shop that has like a old World War II like flame suit in <laughs> and he's like, hmm. <laughs> He goes to this flower shop, it's closed, he's knocking, I just need some flowers for my mom! He sells him some flowers and she locks up, she's at the bus stop and these guys are all harassing her. Donnie pretends to be the nice guy, like, these guys are harassing you, I'll give you a ride home. My mom's really sick, do you mind me stopping off at home first? It's on the way, I just need to check up on her. Well, do you want to come in? You know, maybe you can meet mom. No, don't worry about it, your mom's sick, I'll call a cab and I'll go home. She picks up the phone and before she can dial, she wakes up and she's chained to the ceiling of this metal room that Donnie has set up. This guy comes in wearing that flame suit and he's got a flamethrower. Lights are on fire. He lights her up. Donnie picks up more women and he brings him back to his house to meet his mother. I don't think I've ever run into a woman who needs my help. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's finding him left, right, and center. He looks at the top of the stairs and he sees visions of his mother standing there. Stop laughing at me! Stop laughing! And he keeps hearing laughing behind one of these rooms and he opens the door and there's three women that are charred up. They're mm. completely burnt to a cinder. So he's obviously gone way <laughs> off the yeah. fucking rails yeah. here. Ends up phoning Ben. I got something lined up for us. I got some tail lined up for the weekend. Two broads that are up for anything. <laughs> in the meantime, his family's all in the background, his wife and kids. Donnie has to go to a department store to get disco clothes. He's like a salesman's dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hard sells him and hard clothes him and upsells him and <laughs> yeah. everything. Donnie ends up showing up at the disco and dressed to the nines. One of the girls wants to get him to dance and is pulling his arms. And he gets flashbacks to when he was a kid when his mother was pulling his arms over the flames. Freaks out and he takes his candle and he pushes it into her face. Her brother ends up seeing this, follows him out into the parking lot and kind of beats the shit out of him. Donnie ends up getting away. He sees two girls that need a ride. They want to look for a place to keep drinking, right? And he's like, well, how about my place? And that's where we're going to end it. Ben is after Donnie because he knows that Donnie is off the rails at yeah. this point. And also that brother is still after him yeah. too. Watch the movie to find out exactly how it ends. And it's a great ending. Oh, fuck yeah. So why should you watch Don't Go In The House? <laughs> 
It's a great story, and it's something that I think everybody can relate to. There's actually a lot of social commentary in this about, well, mental health and child abuse and like a really strict religious upbringing mm -hmm. and how that can really mess up a child. They associate his abuse to the way he kills. His mother burns him, I'm gonna burn the evil out of you. And then that's how he kills people is by fire. That leads us into the characters for this movie, right? Which there aren't that many, which is actually a good thing. The story doesn't get too muddled. Donnie being the main character, he does a great job of being like, just on the verge all the time. It's not your typical faceless guy in a mask slasher where you don't care about this guy, you don't know anything about him. Yeah. You get in this guy's head and you actually get to understand why he's doing what he's doing. And you sympathize with him as awful as it is. You're like, ah, I kind of don't blame you. Yeah, yeah. It's like I can't condone all the yeah. horrible burnings and yeah. such, but I understand <laughs> you're, it. You're fucked up. <laughs> yeah. This movie hinges on one character, mm -hmm. and that's Donnie. Yeah. And if they got an actor who couldn't pull it off, this movie would completely fall off the rails. The film is on his shoulders, and he does a great job of carrying this film on his shoulder. The raw feel of the movie, too, kind of plays into that, right? Yeah. Where it's not perfect, but that kind of goes in with the general feel of the entire yeah. movie anyways. Yeah. The whole idea of the film is... It isn't perfect, life isn't perfect, people aren't perfect, and poor Donnie is, as a child, being abused for not being perfect. The effects in this movie are fantastic. Yeah, for you know, 79? Fuck! The use of fire is great, and it could easily just cut to some fat yeah. fire suit, but no, it looks legit. Yeah, or they show the flames super close up to yeah. the camera and the person is way yeah. behind you're yeah. like oh yeah. that's shitty and the dead corpses ah oh, fantastic yeah just mwah. You, you can smell it yeah it's it's, it's like uh, it reminds me a lot of Derange, the movie Derange, the way the corpses look. You would not be surprised if you saw Tom Savini's name on the credits. You yeah. know, it's, it's that good. It's Savini good. The atmosphere for this movie is so dark. It's intense. Yeah. And if it feels like a weight on your chest. A bit of comedy, right? And it's needed. Yeah. It really is needed for this movie. Like the suit shopping scene comes in at a perfect point where it kind of gives you a bit of a breather from all the heavy, dreary... It's a great scene and it's it's, it's long. It's like, it's full of you. You see him shop for a suit from, fr from entering yeah. the establishment to leaving. You know, the whole <laughs> process. Sales 101 is yep. this movie. You yep. want to know how to sell something to somebody? Watch this scene. This guy fucking does it. <laughs> To a T. I love how they do that scene too, without any actual comedy in it. Yeah. It's just the, the way the, the dialogue is set up. You're not, you know, doubled over laughing. Or in your face funny. It's just... It's just the way the characters play out. The setting is great too, and it really helps build that atmosphere, that old house. Kind of got different areas, and you can tell which area is mom's area, because <laughs> it's nice, and looks beautiful, and all this nice old furniture. Yeah. And Donnie's area, where it's dilapidated and there's even that comment that girl makes when she's walking up the stairs like this place really needs a paint job <laughs> and one thing that helps with the atmosphere of this movie too is the music oh the music is so good for its simplicity percussive type sounds happening very like texas chainsaw yep. massacre ish like this weird noises that like really kind of makes you feel Donnie's insanity, yeah, right? Yeah, you can like, feel it, right? You kind of start going insane with him as you're watching it. The disco music yeah. helps to sort of bring you out of that a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah. So you're you're enlightened a little yeah. bit. Rivals prom night with <laughs> yeah. the amount of disco. Like, fuck, if they had the rights to call this movie Disco Inferno, <laughs> the name of the movie, Don't Go in the House, was actually a last-minute change. They were going to call this The Burning. It would have made all the sense in the world. Yeah. But at the same time, the movie The Burning was in production and they found out about The Burning and they're like, okay, we got to change the name to something else. Right. Well, don't go in the house. Well, it's actually not a great name. I think it's one reason this movie is overlooked is because yeah. the name's kind of generic and cheap and 
It's boring. actually it's yeah. actually the worst thing of this movie is the, the damn title. Yeah. So if they would have come up with a different name besides the burning that had more to do with the movie, because mm -hmm. Don't Go in the House has nothing to do with the plot, I think it would have been far more successful. And the burning also kind of fucked up another movie that was in production at the same time. Three movies in production at the same time all kind of intertwined. Is Madman yeah. was originally about the Cropsey urban legend and, well, the burning's about Cropsy, so Madman had to change their movie, too, all at the same time. The burning, the only burning that happens is the, that is caretaker guy, yes. yeah, the Cropsy guy yeah. gets burned. That's it! Yes, yeah, this should have been called The Burning. This movie also has a fantastic ending that we're not going to ruin for you, but... It just closes everything out perfectly, yeah, yeah. and it and it also leaves it open for more of this to keep happening. Yeah, too, right? which is very interesting. Like it does close the door <laughs> yeah. of Donnie's story, but it opens up possibly another story. Yeah. So if you haven't seen Don't Go in the House, definitely check it out if you're a fan of like Psycho, which definitely Psycho inspired. It's cut from the same cloth as like Deranged. Oh, definitely Deranged. A maniac who's suffering with the death of his mother. Yeah, and has suit mama. And has to cope <laughs> with it, and he copes with it by killing more people. It's all kind of related, but this movie really stands on its own because of the subject matter, because of the whole anti-religion, anti-child abuse, of which a lot of movies don't have a theme. It's just endless killing, but this movie has something to say. Yeah, there's a lot of substance to yeah. this movie, right? They managed to do it simply. So, definitely check out Don't Go in the House, and until next time, keep drinking.